the show for real estate entrepreneurs. What's so remarkable about your story is that you did come from those really humble beginnings. I mean, to be homeless, to be lacking food, to be dirt poor, as you, you called it. Yep. Um, what, how did you go from that to where you are now? Because I know a lot of people in those type of situations, they lose hope, they feel pointless, they, you know, they see it as impossible. And so how, how did you? You just said it, I lost hope. I found certainty. I realized that, that it wasn't a possibility that I would be a multimillionaire, it was a certainty. I was a multimillionaire even though the money had not yet been deposited in my bank account. And it's, it's one of those things that for me, everything happens in, in its time. And for me, my mother, we were seated at the dining room table one night and I was six years old and we were eating peach cobbler, dessert for, for dinner. In my adult life, I realize now we were having dessert for dinner because there was no other food in the house. that's all that was there. Yeah, my mom had some flour, found a big can of peaches in the back of the pan cupboard and made cobbler. And she's saying a prayer. We've all, we're all holding hands. She's saying a prayer, God, please provide for my family. I don't know what to do. And she's crying and she's not sobbing. She, she doesn't even sound like she's crying, yet there's streams of water coming down her face, in pools on her, on her lap. And I looked at her and the six-year-old Marshall said, whatever is making her do that, I will do whatever I need to do to never see that again. Wow. And from the time we're born until we're eight years old, the majority of our programming is done. And for me, that was one of the things that I, I devoted my lifetime to, to making my mother's life easier. Because even though there were 11 kids, my mother, because of the different fathers, raised us on her own. And I watched her work three jobs and I watched her not be able to be there for us. And that when she wasn't working, she was there as much as anybody could humanly be. Mm -hmm. I mean, she drove me to my magic shows when I was a kid. She, mm -hmm. she would always be there for the kids' baseball, the other kids' baseball games and just remarkable. And so that was one of the things early on that was instilled in me is money cures most things. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't really even stop and think about that. If you have a lot of money, you don't have to worry about governmental health care plans. You've got your own. If you have money, you have more choices of where you can go. So you have more choices of who you'll likely be in a relationship with. When you're rich, you instantly become better looking. Trust me on this one. Trust me on this one. So I, I decided early on to be rich. And I started working full time when I was 10 years old. I'd go to school from you know eight in the morning till two o'clock. I'd get out at two o'clock and I'd be on the muck farms in Michigan, which were the, the dirt, the really rich, dark soil that they would grow carrots and, and spinach in. And I'd climb through the muck fields till 10 o'clock at night, weeding the, the muck fields for a dollar an hour. I started doing professional magic at 10 years old and started getting paid for that. And, and when I discovered that people would pay you for what you love to do anyway, oh, that, that was an epiphany. That was like that a, was a, a light major bulb moment. Absolutely. Wow. And so now these days, you know, I teach my students only do what you love. Tell me what you love and I'll teach you how to monetize it. Mm, I love that. So it almost seems like that moment at the dinner table with your mom became your new why. You know, I don't like why. I okay. like what or how. Okay. Um, people say, what's your why? And, and yeah. I get that that's kind of cool. And a lot of people have said that. I like what's your what. And here's the reason I like what's your what. Why is subjective. Why is a, is, a, is a moving target? What is a certain thing? And I like certain things. I like okay. certain people. I like certain relationships. I like certain wealth. I like raising certain kids. I like being a certain husband. I like being a certain person. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, I ask not why, I ask what or how. If you ask an employee, why are you late? They'll tell you a hundred different reasons, a hundred different days in a row. If you ask them, um, what could we do to get you here on time so you don't lose your job tomorrow? Oh, I love that. <laughs> then what happens is they start giving you a what. And a what is math. And I like yes. math a lot. Money's math. Makes a lot more logical. It, it gives them a game plan. Mm -hmm. It's not a feeling now. No, it's a certainty. It's a plan. It's, it's a doable. It's an actionable. So relate that back to the, your, uh, the dinner table example. What became your what? My what was uh, no money bad money good. In fact, we couldn't afford to have pets. My brother went to high school and as one of the experiments, they had some rats that they put through mazes and labyrinths and stuff. And so they were about to kill the rats because the experiment was done. I mean, this is the 60s. You were allowed to do stuff like yeah. that. Not now, the, the, you know, 
Society of the Prevention you know, of Cruelty to Animals. Someone knocking at your Absolutely door for be sure. All over you. SCPA. <laughs> to listen to this full Founders Club interview, go to foundersclub.tv.